Now that we know what discrete random variables are and how to graph them in a probability histogram setting, we also want to be able to figure out some of the rules that govern these discrete random variables and how we can make distributions of them in a table form, because that's going to be extremely useful to us. So a probability distribution of a discrete random variable is a table, a graph, or a formula which provides all possible values of the random variable and their corresponding probabilities. Now we actually already saw this if I go back here to the NBA example. So here's the probability distribution, technically not the count part of it, but the x variable and the probabilities. Those together make a discrete probability distribution. Discrete because this is 4, 5, 6, 7 and a probability because we have the probabilities over here. So that's a discrete probability distribution in a table form. Now in a graph form, that would be the histogram. So that's a discrete probability distribution in a histogram. Now in a formula part, um, we are going to see that in actually 6.2. Technically, these graphs were created with formulas um, by a computer program. And we're going to see the formula for the top type of graph in section 6.2. And if anybody was going on to section 6.3, you would see that one right here for the Poisson distribution. All right, now what are the rules of a discrete probability distribution? So there's two big rules you have to pay attention to, and they shouldn't come as any great shock to anybody because they're the same rules we learned in chapter 5. The first is that the sum of the probabilities, and remember this, this capital sigma up here in the front, that just means sum in mathematics. So it means you add them up. So when you add up all your probabilities for the whole sample space, you should have one. And the next rule is that all your probabilities have to, in fact, be valid probabilities. So they have to be between 0 and 1. The highest you could have is 1. The lowest you could have is 0. And then I just typed that up a little bit for you guys. So the first rule is that the probabilities must sum to 1. And the next rule is that every probability must be valid, right? That you can't have any negative nor higher than one. That's the opposite of the complement, if you will, of what was written here. So in other words, they have to be between zero and one inclusive. You can include zero, you can include one, but nothing higher than one, nothing lower than zero. All right, so we're gonna determine whether the following are valid probability distributions and explain in each case. Now you might be worried about letter A because there's this negative 15 here. However, I didn't say anything about X can't be negative. I just said the probabilities can't be negative. In this case, none of the probabilities are negative. So, and there are none that are bigger than one, so that's good. And the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the sum of those probabilities is one. So let's add them up. Yep that makes one. So this is a valid probability distribution, right? Each probability is between 0 and 1, and the sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1. There we have it. Each p of x, each probability, is between 0 and 1, and the sum of all the probabilities is equal to 1. I'm just being lazy about writing p of x, because I can. All right, what about this one? Well, we can already see that this adds to 1, so that's fine. And then these are valid probabilities. You can't have any negatives, which you don't, and you can't have any higher than 1, which you don't, but you do have the sum equal to 0, or excuse me, the sum equal to 1, and every probability between 0 and 1, and actually just, I'll make a note on this one, inclusive, right? Inclusive means that they can be 0 or 1. I didn't have to bother writing that over here on the left because none of these were 0 and 1, so I didn't care. But over here on the right, since that's my only options, then that's what I'll say. All right, now for letter C, the answer is going to be no. And I can see it from here. And the problem is this guy right there, negative 0.10. That violates the second rule. You can't have a probability that's negative like that. And that's what I just typed up right here. So it is impossible for the probability of 20, right, to be negative 0 0.10. Negative probabilities are not possible. Or how about this, not valid. All right, now what about over here? Well, I don't see any negative probabilities, so that's okay. Let's check the sum here. I didn't have to bother checking the sum on letter C because I knew that it wasn't going to work because of the negative probability. 
and for letter B, I could just do it in my head. All right, so one, two, four, five, six. So I've got one, two, three, four. I need two more. And if you're savvy, you might realize this isn't going to work. Yep, the sum is 1.2. So that is not going to work either, right? Each probability is between 0 and 1. That's fine. But the sum of all the probabilities is not 1. It's 1.2, which is not, <laughs> not valid.